My right is in support of this resolution uh, designating the National Pipeline Safety Month. Mr. Speaker, pipelines obviously play an important role in our society through the operation of uh, our homes, our businesses, by delivering the energy to drive our cars, to cook our food, to keep us warm and uh, in the uh, warm in the winter and cool in the summer. And it's undeniable. It's an undeniable reality that energy affects all aspects of our lives, and all Americans need to depend on energy. That's why it's unfortunate, uh, Mr. Speaker, that some in the majority would like to, and the administration, frankly, would, are, are proposing this cap-and-trade legislation that many are calling a cap-and-tax legislation that would dramatically increase the cost of energy for all Americans, every single American. Estimates say that this bill could increase a cost to a family of four close to $3,000 a year, $2,937 a year to be exact, and raise electrical rates on families by 90% after adjusting for inflation, boost gasoline prices by 74% on American families, Mr. Speaker, and natural gas prices by 55%. And if that, that were not bad enough, it would also put American businesses at a huge uh, disadvantage, competitive disadvantage, with th their competitors from other countries that don't pursue that kind of legislation, be it China or India. Now let's take a look at what some key players in the administration have recently stated about this legislation, some facts. And uh, for example, as CBO director, uh, when he was the CBO uh, director and currently the OMB director, Mr. Orzag, Peter Orzag, testifying to the Ways and Means Committee on September 18th, 2008, Mr. Speaker, he said, quote, decreasing emissions would also impose a, co impose a cost on the, on the economy, a cost on the economy. Much of those costs will be passed along to consumers in the form of higher prices for energy and energy-intensive goods. Mr. Orzak's written testimony stated that the average annual, annual household cost was $1,300. That's for a 15% cut in CO2 emissions, which, by the way, happens to be 80% less than the cut sought by this administration. Another fact, on March 17, 2009, Energy Secretary Stephen Chu, testifying before the Science Committee, said, quote, the cap-and-trade bill will likely increase the cost of electricity, end of quote. Another fact I'd like to bring up today, Energy, Seg Energy Secretary Stephen Chu said that advocating adjusting trade duties as a weapon to protect manufacturing, U.S. manufacturing, because otherwise, again, U.S. manufacturing would be put at a huge disadvantage. He said establishing a, car a carbon tariff would help, quote, level the playing field if other countries haven't imposed mandatory reductions in carbon emissions. Again, referring to the fact that it will put our industry at a huge, huge disadvantage. And again, Mr. Chu said, quote, if other countries, if other countries don't impose a cost on carbon, then we will be at a disadvantage. And he went on to say, and we would look at considering duties to offset that cost. But the legislation doesn't have those in the, in the bill. Again, what we are looking at then is for the United States to impose a self-inflicted wound to put our industry and our country, our, our country at a huge disadvantage, increasing costs of energy to all consumers in this great country of ours at a time in particular when everybody is hurting. Last month, on May 21st, CBO director the, the current CBO director testified be the, before the House Budget Committee and said that the CBO has been very clear that cap-and-trade system or carbon tax would raise the price of carbon emissions and the cost would ultimately be borne by households. Again, it's not rocket science, Mr. Speaker. Again, it's also widely understood, understood that if we raise the price of carbon emissions and our, and our trading partners do not, then that creates an additional challenge for our carbon emitting industries. Those are his words. I added the part about the rocket science, to be fair. Uh, but those are his words. So it's fitting that we are now here talking about pipelines and energy. And I just hope that we don't forget the big picture as well, and that we don't impose this huge cost on our consumers, on those who use gasoline, that turn on lights like everybody does, uh, that manufacturers using energy like every industry does, and that we don't put them at a huge disadvantage. And with that, uh, uh, I yield back to my main part of my time. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.